IoT, IoT, IoT. I'm so sick and tired of everyone talking about IoT. Hold on guys, I'm getting a call on my watch. Hello? All right, so IoT, what is IoT? IoT stands for Internet of Things, right? And so what it really means is it's this web of different devices that are connected to your network. Okay, most of these devices are small, uh, something that could be, let's say, for example, my smartwatch. Or, you know, if you have smart lighting where you have smart light bulbs uh, that could change colors, things like that. Anything that could be a sensor that passes data through the network could be considered an IoT device. Okay, you have them in different industrial buildings, let's say uh, different temperature sensors. Uh, you could have them in your home, such as a fridge, a TV, uh, things like that. So IoT covers a lot of different devices uh, that you may be exposed to. Now, I'm going to break down what IoT is, or how they communicate, rather, in a very general sense. There's many different ways that these IoT devices communicate with each other, but here's the most general uh, kind of overview. So you have your IoT device, and let's say it's a watch. All right, well, it will send its data through a gateway, which allows it to then connect to the internet. All right, and from the internet, that's where it really communicates with the data, cent uh, data server, but it also communicates with the controlling device or a controller. Now, a simple example of this would be, uh, let's say in your house, you have a uh, smart light bulb, okay? But you could actually c control that using an application on your smartphone. Well, that would be the light bulb, and then your smartphone will be the controller, which controls it. All right, so that's a general, very basic overview of IoT and what IoT is, along with how IoT communicates. So what challenges are present? right here, with security and privacy. A lot of these IoT devices aren't built with security uh, in mind. It's more built for ease of, uh, ease of use or functionality. Okay, so there's no security, there's no privacy controls. Um, also, credentials. A lot of the credentials come with default credentials or the vendor generated. Um, oftentimes you don't even have to change the passwords. Uh, it also uses clear text. And with clear text, what that means is these credentials or any information that's being sent back and forth through that internet is able to be read by anybody. It's not encrypted, okay? And the last two are kind of hand in hand. Uh, a lot of IoT devices don't have regular updates to their firmware or their software. And that's because the vendors don't support that. All right, so now that we've covered some of the challenges or vulnerabilities present in these different IoT devices, let's see what we can do to kind of protect our network or protect our devices. And the first one is restrict connection. And I mean that in several different ways. The first one is you should restrict what is actually connected to your network. And if you have different IoT devices, do you need them all connected at your internet, uh, onto your home network at all times? Uh, for instance, uh, you could have a smart fridge uh, in your home, but really, if the only functionality that it's providing, even though it has all these bells and whistles, is to keep your food cold, then do you really need it to be connected to your internet? Right? Things like that. So you want to make sure that only what you're using, or only what's in use, is being connected to your home network. The second aspect of restricting connection is what is being connected to your home network, right? So do you know what is actually accessing the internet through your network, right? Is it computers? Is it uh, different TVs? Is it watches? What is being uh, connected to the internet using your network? Are you tracking which assets are accessing it? You should uh, make sure you find out and keep a list somewhere so that you can actually restrict the connections whenever you're not using uh, certain devices. Next one is passwords. Passwords, passwords, passwords. Uh, with passwords, 
make sure you are implementing strong passwords. And by strong, I mean uh, it, it's long enough, but it also has different variables such as characters and numbers. Uh, sometimes using passphrases uh, is helpful, but make sure you use one that is uh, something that you can remember, but it's not easy to deduce, okay? Third is updating. If you're able to update your devices, make sure you go and update it. Uh, the reason for these updates is the vendors will usually provide these updates in order to fix or patch the different vulnerabilities that are found, okay? So you wanna make sure you update all your devices because uh, a device that's not properly updated could present a security vulnerability. There may be some vulnerability there, uh, let's say something to do with the connection, and someone could take advantage of that and use that device in order to gain access into either other devices or to just sniff out the traffic or read the traffic that's flowing between the different devices. And lastly, there's something called UPnP or Universal Plug and Play. And it allows for great ease of use uh, because you don't have to configure anything. But the problem with this, uh, with this is that an attacker will also know that UPnP is easily accessible uh, they could also use that to gain access into other devices or to read the traffic. Well, that's a wrap, folks. Thank you for taking the time to watch this week's Quitna. Uh, if you have any questions related to security, feel free to uh, leave the questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope everyone learned something from this. And if not, serves as a, uh, serves as a, as a reminder excuse me, um, to make sure you keep uh, security practices uh, in your mind. Uh, I look forward to seeing everyone next week, so I'll see you then. Bye!